Welcome to another edition of Reader q and I'm Kelly Garrett, founder of Etc., and I'm answering some of my readers' questions uh, from my stylish and smart tips and resources email. So today is actually our first edition of Reader Q&A, so I'm really excited to start off this series for you. Today's question comes from Teresa Senecola of the International Christian Mompreneur Network. She is in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and she sent in her question via video. So let's take a look. Hey, Kelly, it's Teresa Senecola with the International Christian Mompreneur Network. Um, I have a question for you, and it's about security. You sent an email about warnings um, about security, and you suggested that we back up our sites um, using Backup Buddy. And um, I wanted to know if you wouldn't mind walking us through that process and kind of just showing me um, how it works. And is Backup Buddy going to back up my full database, or is it just going to back up my content files? I don't even know how that works. Um, and then, you know, secondly, where is it backing it up to and, and how often do I need to be doing it and that kind of stuff. Um, and I know you take care of a lot of that for me, um, but, and, which I totally appreciate, um, but I'd love to kind of understand a little bit more about it and um, I appreciate all that you do. Thank you very much. Thanks, Teresa. I actually have a video tutorial for you on this topic, so I'm going to show that to you now and just walk you through all of Backup Buddy and how to make sure that your site is backed up correctly. Hello, it's Kelly from Etc. Today I'm going to show you how to use the Backup Buddy plugin on your WordPress installation. So it's a really good idea to have something like Backup Buddy doing an automatic backup of your WordPress website. This way you know that if something were to ever happen to your website, you wouldn't need to worry because you'll have a backup. So once you have Backup Buddy installed, um, you'll see right over down on the left side, you'll find the Backup Buddy menu. And we'll just take you through all of these different menus. The first one is the Backup menu. And this is where you'll actually be seeing the backups that are there and instructing um, it to make your backups. So when you click on that, you'll look and see, um, you might get some notifications here that a new version is available. Um, you want to update those when they come out. And this also will give you any sort of um, notifications that you need. This isn't a problem right now because I know this is saying I have more subdirectories on my web and, and that's okay. I want to, I, I don't want to um, back those up, so so that's fine. That's not a problem. So this, there are two different types of backups that you can have. One is called database only, and the other is a complete backup. Usually, you will want to have a complete backup. I can't think of too many situations where you would want database only um, because it's hard to restore a database only backup. Uh, and if you lose, if your website gets hacked or, or your files get uh, messed up somehow, you'll want a complete backup. So I just set it to run complete backup all the time. Um, so if you wanna just manually do a backup, all you have to do is click the complete backup button. It's really easy and it'll walk you through the backup. It's just gonna go through and, and go through each step and keep a log of what's happening and you'll see the archive size of the final backup file increasing here as it's working through each item. You can check the log if you want. Um, there's a lot of information here in the log and it, line by line it adds an item as it's as it's doing it. So if you ever have errors on your on your backup buddy, if you get an email with an error or you see that the previous backup didn't complete successfully, the status log is a good place to check. Okay, so this backup is complete, and you can see at the bottom it'll say backup completed successfully. And then what we can do is just go back to our backup page and check out the list of backups that we have. And we'll just want to see that this one was from today. And over here it shows that it was a full backup. And on the status it shows that it was good. It would give you an error message there if, if something happened and the backup didn't complete successfully. So you'll just want to always make sure that that status says good. 
So now if you were to need one of these backups, you would just um, high, move your mouse over it and click download and you can download that backup or um, you can log into your server and use an FTP to transfer the file to your computer. Um, so you can also use this tool called Restore and Migrate. This is what you would use if you wanted to restore a previous backup. And when you do that, there's a file that you need to download to put on the server that you're going to use when you import or restore one of your backups. Um, that's a little bit more advanced, so that's the type of thing that you may want to have a developer work with you on, but for the most part, um, you, you might be able to walk through this yourself. Now, sometimes you don't want to store your backup only on your own web server. Uh, backup Buddy by default stores on your web server locally. So if, you're, if you got hacked, you know that might mess up your backup, or if you lose access to your web hosting for some reason, you wouldn't have your backup. So it's a good idea to also send your backup to a remote destination. And there are all sorts of different destinations you can send it to, depending on the version of Backup Buddy you have or the, the package that you bought. Uh, it includes, it may include some, uh, it's called Backup Buddy stash information, um, storage where you can store your backup. That's what I have set up right now for this website for Beyond Lovely. But if you wanted to send your backup somewhere else, you would click add new and then it's going to ask you where you want to send it to. You can do Stash, Amazon, Dropbox, Rackspace, um, a local directory on your web server, which it's already doing, so you really shouldn't need to do that. An FTP location other than your own server, you can email it to yourself as well. Um, so those are some options. Depending on the size of the backup, some of these options may not work. Backups, it's great if you can have a backup under a gigabyte because once it starts getting to be about 500 megabytes or so, then it gets difficult to transfer to other locations. So the biggest things that are going to take up space are going to be things like pictures and videos. Um, if you can keep your pictures as small as possible, that helps reduce a lot of space. Um, things like videos and audios, you may want to use another service to store those so they're not taking up space on your website and then your backups are going to be a lot smaller and will work faster. So you could use something like Amazon S3 to store your audios or your videos. Or for videos in particular, you could use YouTube or Vimeo so that you're not actually storing the video files on your web server. So now this will just show you the different backups that you have and shows that for me and for this website, they're going to the stash that is included with the backup buddy that I have. And here you can just grab more stash space if you need it. Um, there are a couple server tools that come with backup buddy. These are more advanced. So um, you'll want to look through this and it's just showing you that your server is properly configured to use backup buddy optimally and if any of these don't pass um, that's something you might want to look into there are really good support forms for backup buddy so you can look at the support forms there or you can have a developer work with you and help problem solve that um, then there are some other things here you probably don't need to worry about most of these tools if you have questions about any of them a developer can get into that with you Another thing that's great to do with Backup Buddy is the malware scan. This is just a scan that, that lets you know if there's any malware or if there's any um, anybody trying to get onto your site or hack your site. And you do this, you access it by just clicking the malware scan. And so it'll run through and, and perform the scan for you. So now the malware scan is complete and it's just going to show you some basic information and it shows right here that there is no malware that appears on our computer so that's great um, you can just scroll down and check out all the different information that it's sending a lot of this information is you know things you don't really need to worry about you just want to check this first line that says that there's no malware and that's when you know you're good then the other thing you can do is set up a schedule for Backup Buddy to automatically back up your website, and I highly recommend that. Depending on how often you change your website, you'll want either a daily, weekly, or monthly backup. 
Um, and what that'll do is it'll just allow Backup Buddy to complete. Um, I would set it up to do the full backup on a weekly basis or however often you do it. And then it'll also allow to send to an offline destination or another destination outside of your web host. So to do that, you would just, you know, name your schedule. I usually name it whatever it is, so weekly if that's what we're doing and then you'll want it to do not the database only but the full backup and then you'll want to set the interval so you can do monthly twice monthly weekly twice weekly daily um, hourly that's that might be getting a little bit excessive but uh, it's up to you and the next run usually that'll just plug in an automatic date and then you can add a remote destination and you want to make sure enable schedule to run is checked because if that is unchecked you can still have your schedule up here, but it's just disabled, it's not running currently. And then you'll click add to schedule. And you should you should check that periodically to make sure that it's running. Um, sometimes companies will offer a, a maintenance package where they will go in and check your backups for you. That's a good thing to do if you're not doing it yourself. So then some of the other settings on this very last tab down here is to um, create you know a custom local directory um, you can set the password you can have error notifications sent to any particular email addresses that you want i think that's a good idea because if you're not if your backups stop working you'll get a notification telling you that and then that's a good time to go in and check the local archive storage limits are a good one to set also I like to keep no more than three backups at any time because I feel like if I'm doing them weekly, that's three weeks worth. I've made enough changes to my website in three weeks that, that I know I'm not going to go want, want to go back three weeks before that. If you don't make a lot of changes to your site, you might want to keep more than three backups. You might want to keep five. Um, this definitely eats up space on your web server, but these backups are not being backed up. So you're not multiplying the size of your backups because the the current backup excludes previous backups. So you're not creating a backup of a backup, if that makes sense. I know that can get very confusing, but the more backups you have, the more space it's gonna take up on your server. So there are some limits you can um, set there. And then if you want to exclude any folders of your backups, you can do that as well. Say for instance, you have something that is just, you know, a transfer file or you're just transferring files back and forth with people and you're using your server for that. You can exclude those folders by just clicking on it and it'll add it to the excluded files over here. So that's how you use Backup Buddy. It's pretty simple. And if you get it set, made it, set it on an automated schedule to set up backups for you, you shouldn't have to worry about it. It's a good idea to go in and check up on your backups every once in a while. But I hope you found that helpful. So I hope that that answers your question. I'm sure someone else out there had that same question. So thanks for sending it in. So if you'd like to have your questions about design, technology, or marketing answered in an upcoming episode, please click the link below for information on sending it in. Thanks for joining me today, and we'll see you in the next episode.